Hi, my name is Mark. So for those who might be wondering what that little tag is on the title, this is the sixth episode of my eighth series, You Ask, I Teach. I know, pretty boring, generic, and self-explanatory title. And as you can guess, this is the series where I pretty much teach anything you guys know in the comment section below. Well, guitar and our music related, of course. I tried to do one of these in the last week of every month. And if this is your first episode, I highly suggest you go check out the other episodes. I'll leave the playlist right there. We've talked about a bunch of subjects that if you want to check out, I highly think you should. And if you have something you want me to talk about, all you need to do is leave it in the comment section below with the hashtag E8. Just like AT did in my last E8 video, AT left a comment saying, Hungarian minor enthusiast here. Being your favorite scale, I'm curious about your ideas on it. Hashtag 8. Again, for those who don't really follow my channel, the Hungarian minor scale is my favorite scale of all time. And I've been teasing making a video about it for months now, and to be completely honest, it's not because I don't want to, it's more because I could make hours and hours of videos talking about that scale, and how I use it in many different ways. For that reason, I thought of doing, well, what you guys love the most, which is a multi-part series. Since doing a huge video talking about this one scale wouldn't really be the best idea, I thought, okay, since there are a bunch of different ways to use the scale, and a bunch of different applications for this scale, let's talk about some of the ones I use the most. This might be sounding a little bit weird for many of you, so let me just show you. But before I do, I just want to say, please subscribe to my channel. You're probably aware that YouTube's been acting a little bit weird lately. Even if you subscribe to the channel, those channel's videos may really not show up in our subscription box. And even if you ring the little notification bell thingy below, you still really would not be notified of that channel's content. So if you want to stay tuned to my content, you really should subscribe, turn on all the notifications. And since it may or may not work, I suggest you follow me on social media. Not only do I post some exclusive stuff there, like improvised solos and jamming over backing tracks, and generally wherever I am up to at the moment, but I always post there about my videos. Again, links for those will be below, but in general at Mark Higgs Guitar. And since you're down there, please consider leaving a like and perhaps share this video on social media, I highly appreciate it. But yeah, I guess now we can get straight into it. Okay, so an important topic I want to discuss is most of your songs will be around your regular major scale tonality. You have a chord progression like... <laughs> in the key of C major, so the notes of the C major scale will work, but that doesn't mean you can add some other sounds to it and invoke the sound of different scales and tonalities. And again, for this lesson, I'll suppose you already know a little bit about theory, like you know about intervals and you know about the major scale and you know about all the different chords like major, minor, diminished and augmented. Even if you don't exactly know how to use all of those, I hope you are at least aware of them. But if there's something I talk about that you aren't exactly comfortable with, again, you can check out the videos on the card session right there. And before you get to it, there's another thing I want to say, which is Rick Beato also did a video talking about this scale, which I think is called the darkest scale ever or something like it. And if you haven't watched that video, I highly suggest you do, because one, is a great video, and not only does Rick know a lot more than I do, but he also talks about some different stuff about this scale that I'm not going to mention in this video. But as I was saying, since I chose the C major scale, let's start by showing you the C Hungarian minor scale. It's pretty much your harmonic minor scale, but with a sharp fourth. I mean, if you don't know your harmonic minor scale, it comes from your minor scale but with a natural 7. Here's your regular minor scale or your Aeolian scale, Aeolian mode, whatever you want to talk about. It goes C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat and C. That's our regular natural minor scale. If you want to do the harmonic minor scale, all we need to do is switch at minor 7, that B flat, for a B. Now our Hungarian minor scale is just taking that harmonic minor scale, but taking the fourth and sharpening it. In this case, one, two, three, four. The fourth is that F, so we sharpen it to an F sharp, and we get this scale. Again, if we break down the notes, C, D, E flat, F sharp, G, A flat, B, C. And again, if you want to learn more about either the natural minor scale or the harmonic minor scale or even the melodic minor scale, I did this video that you can check out in the card section right there. Oh yeah, and intervalically this scale goes root, second, flat third or minor third, sharp fourth, fifth, minor sixth or flat sixth, seventh, and then we get back to the root. For those who know a little bit about scale, there's a couple of sides you can be. One is the side of, oh, it's mostly like the harmonic minor scale, so you can just use it like the harmonic minor scale. Which is true, it is very similar to the harmonic minor scale, 
And there are tons of situations where you can either use the harmonic minor scale or perhaps the Hungarian minor scale. But because of that sharp fourth, depending on what you need to play, those scales will not sound the same. For instance, if I take one of the most iconic harmonic minor guitar riffs and turn it from a harmonic minor riff to a Hungarian minor riff, you can hear the difference. Here's the harmonic minor one. <laughs> I turn it into a Hungarian minor riff. That sharp fourth makes a big difference. And if we compare it to our natural minor scale, because it has that natural seventh and that sharp fourth, all the modes turn out to be a little bit more spicy. For instance, if we were in regular C minor, we see a Yulin. One of the modes, for instance, the Phrygian mode, would sound something like this. But now in our C Hungarian minor scale, our G Phrygian mode becomes a little bit different. Some people call it a Byzantine scale, but it's basically your Phrygian scale, but you make it a major scale instead of a minor scale, sort of like a Phrygian dominant scale. take the dominant part of it, which is having that major scale with that minor 7th, and you raise the minor 7th to regular 7th. It's not like it was a completely different sound, it's just a little bit more spicy. And that's usually what happens with the rest of the modes, except for the ones that sort of stop existing. For instance, if we were in just our regular C minor, we would get our B flat and Solidian. <laughs> Well, now in C Hungarian minor, we don't really have that Mixolydian scale anymore. We now get this weird, almost augmented scale. The same thing happens with our Dorian mode. Again, in regular C minor, C Lydian, our F mode. And now because we don't have an F, we have an F sharp, our Dorian scale becomes this weird, almost incomplete scale. But now you might be asking, okay, that's cool and all, but by showing me all of these things, I haven't really shown why you think that scale sounds cool. It just sounds, looks, and works in weird ways. And that is true, but I brought you all of this weird stuff first, because one, you can take this scale and just mix it in with your regular minor vamps. For, for instance, if you have like a C minor vamp, you can use this scale. <laughs> scale to invoke different chord tonalities within the same chord. I know that may sound a little bit weird for some of you, but let's take the C major scale for instance. Each chord can only really be that chord. The first chord, the C major chord, has the notes C, G, and E. If we take the E for another note in the scale, for instance, if we take it for the D, we get a suspended chord. It's sort of a different chord, but a suspended chord is only really useful for you to hide the properties of that chord. You can resolve this chord to either a major chord, or to a minor chord. It depends on the tonality you are. If you're in C major, like you were before, if you had this chord, nicely to the C major. And the same thing with most of the chords, it only really changes in the F chord, because you can almost do a diminished chord, but you can't really do a diminished chord. It will become incomplete, but in our C Hungarian minor scale, most of our chords can turn into different chords and still be within the scale. And I'll give a really quick explanation to this, because I've done another video talking about this, which you can check out in the card section right there. But basically, if we take the first chord in our Hungarian minor scale, if we take the first note, the third, and the fifth, one, 
two, three, four, five. The first chord would be a C minor chord. And this is the correct chord for C in the key of C Hungarian minor. But if, for instance, you substitute the fifth, if you substitute it for its fourth, you get a diminished chord. And I know what you might be thinking, which is what I talked about in that video right there. In this case, it would technically not be a diminished chord, because you don't have a root, a third, and a fifth. This is not really the fifth of that scale, this is the fourth. And you're correct, but this sharp fourth sounds the same as a diminished fifth. So even though in the scale, in theory, it's not a proper C diminished chord, to our ears, it is a C diminished chord. And if you're playing a song which has a C diminished chord, you can use the C Hungarian minor scale, but focus more on these three notes, and it will work. Scale. We took a look at that major fridge and major seventh scale. And that scale is also a good example because if you take the first note, the third, one, two, three, and the fifth, three, four, five, you get a major chord. But for instance, if you take the fifth note of that chord and you raise it to the sixth note, which in this case is a minor sixth, you can form an augmented chord. And again, the same thing applies here. This is the root of the third, and this is not the fifth. In the context of the scale, it's the minor sixth. But when you listen to it, it definitely sounds like an augmented chord. So the next time you have an augmented chord, you can use this scale if you focus on those notes, even though this is not a proper augmented scale and isn't really your first choice. But the one I'm more particularly fond of is the B chord in the key of C Hungarian minor. In the context of the scale, if we take the root, third and fifth, one, two, three, four, five, it's a minor chord. But if you take, for instance, the third of that chord, which is that D, and you sharpen it to the next note of the scale, you get a major chord. And once more, in the context of the scale, it isn't a major chord. It's technically a sus4 chord. But for a chord that's supposed to be a sus4 chord, it definitely sounds like a major chord. And again, major chord, you can take the fifth and sharpen it to the next note of the scale, which is a G, and you have an augmented chord. And that can open a ton of possibilities, not only improvisational-wise, again, if you have a minor chord, major chord, or augmented chord, you can use the B mode of C Hungarian minor, but also in a compositional way. Even if you just use one of the possible chords for B and the C minor chord, for instance, C minor to... B major. You already have this weird chord progression that may or may not be something you're looking for. In my case, it was something that I was definitely looking for, and I think that's one of the reasons I gravitated to this scale. Once more I focused on the related chords, but you can also do this to the A flat chord, which can be a major chord, can be a minor chord, can be a diminished chord, and it is also a dominant chord. There are so many possibilities within the scale, and we haven't even talked about mixing some other notes into it. For instance, by missing the F, if we added the F to the scale, our B chord could not only be, like we looked at before, a minor major and augmented chord, but it could also be a diminished chord. 
Imagine that, you can have all the different core types with the same root all in the same scale. That's a little bit crazy at first, but I like it. And that's also especially cool if you take in mind functional harmony and the properties of each chord by being in C, Hungarian minor, by landing on the B chord. Depending on which chord you choose, you can make some interesting modulations. For instance, if you choose the B major chord, you can use that B major chord, or, the, or even the B augmented, to modulate to either E minor or a E major. Or if you take in mind the F and try to add it in, you can use it to modulate to C major. And depending on how you do it, it can sound really cool. Again, the sort of sound may or may not be something you're looking for, but just by moving stuff around within the scale, not really adding much of other scales, I already did a chord progression that's within the scale, then I modulated to E minor. And then I think I used a diminished chord to get back to C minor. For G major, which is in the C Hungarian minor scale. And then I took the opportunity to do E major with a sharp ninth. So that I could modulate again to a G augmented chord. I think I did a flat major, a flat minor, a flat diminished. Again, I can't exactly recall everything I did. But I did it all within the scale. And you can also do pretty much everything I did, but sort of arpeggiate it and turn it into soloing. Again, the C Hungarian minor scale is a minor scale, so if you just have a C minor vibe, you can use all of these colors. During your solo. do more videos about this in the future, but then you can combine this scale with some other weird scales. So if you want me to give you some more tips and tricks about this scale or some other scales, please leave it in the comment section below. I'll probably do some more videos talking about this scale, but if you really want some more videos, I'll do them as soon as I can. But for now, let's just get to the outro. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope this video was helpful to you in any way possible. And if it was, please leave me a comment below. Do you have anything to add to this discussion? Did you agree? Did you not agree? Was there something I missed? Something I should have said? Also, if you have any suggestions for videos, don't forget this is my Yate series, where you guys can leave comments with whatever you want me to talk about, and the hashtag Yate. But I also do some other videos. Sometimes I do some more discussion type of videos. Other times I do guitar related stuff, like talking about technique or breaking out of the box and improvising and some other times I even take a look at a specific clip from a player that I either think is interesting or a little bit different from what they usually play and then transcribe it and break it down so that you guys can check it out. I'll leave those playlists in the card section right there and also on the annotations of the end screen in just a couple of seconds so please stay tuned. But yeah, I guess that's it. Again, thank you so very much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on all the notifications. Perhaps follow me on social media and share this video on social media and leave a comment so that you can be featured on the next episodes of my 8 series. But yeah, cheers! Thank you.